Hi everyone. This is Angelica. How are you? So I just got back from uh, Vipassana where I went for a few days for, but I actually meditated for um, a total of like 36 hours. So um, this is a difficult thing to do, <clears throat> first of all. Um, and I really like to push myself into new um, growth and new healing. So um, it's really, really helpful for me. And I would really recommend it to anyone who feels interested in really transforming some of the things um, deep within them. So I'll tell you the basis of it. There's so many aspects to Vipassana. Now, I've done meditation in the past, all different kinds of meditation, but this one is so extremely beneficial. Um, it's very difficult. It's more difficult than other meditations because you have to go deep down within the the deeper parts of the mind the subconscious mind is actually where you're going and you're going there to purify the mind so the surface level of the mind is what we are you know dealing with on a daily basis <clears throat> it's what reacts to situations it's what is always going non-stop and the unconscious mind or the deeper levels of the mind are always in reaction to sensations in the body. So this is the key. This is the key to this kind of meditation because this unconscious part of our mind is always in the background reacting to sensations in the body. We are either looking at things as yay I like this feeling and I want more of this which is craving or no I don't like this feeling um, stop this feeling which is aversion so we either crave for something because we really like it or we resist something because we don't like it so the key to Vipassana meditation is <clears throat> first you practice um, uh, Hanahana, I well, I can't remember what it's called. It's something where you're just paying attention to the breath, the in and out breath. Once you get really good at that for a couple of days. Now, before you can go to the you know three or four day meditations, you have to first do a full ten days, and so that's why it's taken me so long to go, because I have children. It's um, <clears throat> I was finally given the opportunity to go. So now I'm just like, wow, I'm so, wow, how amazing this practice is. Anyway, so you breathe. The, so the 10 days is really in depth. Um, but just to go again and get refreshed on all this information brings it all back so that I can actually use it again and continue my practice. Because you have to practice, you know, when you get back. And I had tried, and I didn't do it. Um, as good of a job as I would like to have done with my own meditation practice. So I'm back on track with that. So these deep roots can only be seen, noticed, um, can, can be made into good roots so that they're not like rotting roots. Because if you have, if the roots aren't good, then the tree is not going to blossom into beauty and flowers and fruit. That's how he explains it. And it's so true. We may have times in our lives where we have fleeting happiness, fleeting, you know, joyful times. But the majority of it is, is not that way because we're constantly reacting to the sensations of the body and when you really get in tune after you've breathe get, get in tune with focusing on the breath in this area it focuses the mind then you're able to go through your body and feel 
all the pain and the fluttery light feelings, the wave, he calls them wavelets, um, the good and the bad, and just to be equanimous and to really practice your equanimity towards, wow, that's a really painful, you know, because when you're sitting like that for so long on the floor on a cushion, you have pain in your body and you want to get up and you want to move around and you are just this time was easier than the last I have to say <clears throat> um, and I already signed up for another one because I can't wait to go back so I see the benefits so much in my life but after the first 10 day one what I noticed in my life is that things started to get better like in my a reactionary normal way of being things started to get better but more stuff like more unconscious stuff started coming up so I was getting whoa like just blasted with the unconscious stuff that I didn't know I even had and this is this is gonna go along with any spiritual journey um, stuff's gonna come up and more stuff as you heal that surface level more stuff's gonna come up but if you want a really good way to get to the root of the issue, then Vipassana meditation, I, I cannot recommend it more. It's, it's just amazing. So another thing that he talks about is when you react, say you get this sensation in your body and that sensation in the body makes you react in anger because everything out there could trigger these sensations but really once you get down to the deepest level of your inner being and the microcosm of your inner being you realize that that you understand the macrocosm of the outer world and so we go within and we figure out ourselves to understand everything else in infinite ways so I know you already know that, but one of the things he does explain is when you react, say, in anger towards something, that, that he calls them sankuras, that reaction of anger creates another sankura, sankura, I think it's called. And when the sankura is there in the unconscious, there we go, another one, building another layer on the pain that's already there. We keep building on and building on when we really are trying to let go and release the layers so that we can become more of our true selves. So when you react in anger, it builds another layer on. But at the same time, there's like a chemical in the brain that releases energy or, or, or chemical reaction that makes you respond in anger again and again and again. And it's like a reoccurring vicious cycle that it's really hard to escape. <clears throat> anyway, going within, seeing how these sensations, going from feeling the top of your head, and you know, sometimes people aren't in tune with their bodies and they don't know how they feel in their own bodies, and getting really in touch with the feelings in your body is going to, this is what's going to bring you to that place of understanding you know, yourself more and your reactions and how you are in the world in your everyday life. It will bring you to a place of happiness and not suffering. And so, so many things that I, and it's funny, I, I was talking to a girl there that I had done the 10-day course with. She was there at the next one. Uh, she's a wonderful person. And she was saying, wow, it's like I was like, getting ready before I came here like I could feel all these things starting to you know come up and I'm just like wow me too it's almost like when you know you're going it's like your mind starts getting ready and you start just like shh, purging all this stuff anyway um, just accepting reality as it is the good and the bad you know, um, good feelings bring craving, bad feelings bring aversion. This is the cause for all suffering. So knowing that we, okay, obviously you can transcend this up 
and down, up and down, polarity. But the only way to transcend it is to accept reality as it is. And he says that a lot, as it is, as it is. Accept reality as it is. Wow, there's this great, wonderful thing happening. Yay! Well, guess what? You get really addicted to that good feeling and you want it, you want it again. That creates craving. So you see the good things as they come and pass away. And the bad things as bringing aversion and anger and like, oh, I, I don't like this. I don't want this to be happening. Um, the bad feelings, it's the same thing. It's going to create these sankuras. And it's just going to keep adding layer upon layer, making these roots, these roots that aren't any good, stronger and stronger. So we have to make the roots healthy and help it to make the tree strong with the beautiful green leaves and the, the flowers and all the fruit and the beautiful things that come along with um, healthy roots. So the one thing that I love so much, and it's a hard, it's a hard thing for me not to get emotional, it's when you do the meta, the meta meditation at the end. And it's where you send, and I'll even get emotional now. And I and I'm like, when I'm doing this meditation, I'm like, oh my gosh. You can't stop. You you can't start crying. You know, this is supposed to be a beautiful thing, but I always do. And I am now. It's okay. It's funny when I was in the beginning of um as it is <laughs> accept reality as it is when I was first um, going through my dark night of the soul um, what I call it in my spiritual awakening I went to a Reiki therapist she did all my chakras or whatever they do and the crystals and the beautiful things and it was so healing and then she got I can't even remember what chakra it was. And my heart chakra was spinning great. All my upper chakras were just so open, but my lower chakras were not. But she she did something around my heart, and I just started crying. And she says, tell me about what you're feeling, like what's going on. And I said, well, I know... Um, my purpose here on earth is to make people happy and to bring them happiness because I don't want them to be unhappy. And I don't want to be unhappy. So I'd like to bring happiness to everyone. That's a really big, you know, goal. And I just cried and cried and cried and I was like releasing that and she and I remember she said, you will, you will. And it was, you know, at the time I just was like, oh yeah, okay. But I was just really discovering that my whole mission in life is to bring others happiness because I love people. I love you so much. So it's something that's so deeply um, held in my heart that I get really emotional about it. So at the end of the whole meditation, you do the meta meditation which is to bring love and happiness to all other beings. May all other beings be happy. May all other beings feel peace. May I bring my calm and peace and love to all others. And I think that's for years I had it backwards. I always wanted everyone else to feel so happy and be happy that I had skipped over myself being happy. And so now I'm kind of going backwards and rediscovering how to make myself happy and, and bring that joy to others. And this didn't just start when I had my spiritual awakening. I came here with this information. I came to this earth with this information. And I just remember being a little girl going around telling everyone it's funny because I only went to Sunday school a couple times when I was little. My mom just took us randomly. She wasn't really religious and neither was my dad. My dad definitely wasn't. But my mom took us and I saw a picture of Jesus. And I knew that I wanted to be like that. And I wanted 
people to experience that amount of love. And so my dad, my dad was, my dad, my mom and dad had a lot of issues when I was growing up and he was somewhat abusive to my mother. And I would just come up as a little girl and I would say, Daddy, Jesus says be kind. And I, and my dad would stop. And he'd be like, oh, darling, that's so sweet. You know, um, I had a good relationship with my dad. So my, but my dad and my mom didn't. So that was the problem. Anyway, the point of this is I would also go around to stores, um, any place that I could see people and I'd smile at them. And I just wanted them to be so happy. And I would watch them in their misery. I could see that they weren't happy. And I was just like, please, like, we can be happy. And now after coming through, you know, so many years of this life, and I still from this meditation have a lot of emotional stuff coming up. And so that's why I'm just whew, emotional. <laughs> Things are changing so much in this grand cross that we had um, in April <sighs> brought us into new ways of being and we're still dealing with some of that stuff. But all I know is I want I truly want to be happy and I truly want you all to be happy. We're all connected. We're all one. We're all united in this world as a whole. And so we really have to heal ourselves within and that heals everything without. And um, it's a beautiful thing and I'm so lucky to be here at this time to be doing this work that I love so much to be helping you guys and I just really do love you there's a lot of love in my heart that I have for you and all of humanity and anytime I bring up that subject I start getting emotional it's really weird <laughs> so because it's my mission that's what my purpose is here so thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you soon I'm gonna make another video um, Thank you for watching. Bye.